Hi, I'm Brian Litz. Um, today we're going to talk about cleaning rifle barrels, okay? Um, we've got a Barrett MRAD here, chambered in 300 Norma. It's got about 500 rounds on it, a couple hundred rounds since its last cleaning. This rifle was last shot in the Night Force Steel Challenge uh, back in June, so it's the last time it was shot and there's probably 200 rounds on it since the last cleaning. Um, now to take a step back, the reason that I'm making this video about cleaning, it's a topic that comes up all the time for discussion. I've typed out my cleaning method and you know on the internet many times in conversations to explain it so i'm making this video to hopefully proliferate the ideas um, of cleaning barrels that i talk about so and these ideas you know they're not just like i was just thinking about it and thought this would work this, this is actually like what i've converged on in my career as a ballistician and as a competitive rifle shooter after paying attention to different ways of cleaning and what the effects were looking with bore scopes and, you know, of course, looking at muzzle velocity and group data in terms of the effects of different cleaning methods. And so in this video, I'm going to explain not just how I clean barrels, but why I do and the effects. And I'm going to show you the effects of cleaning barrels. All right. So we're going to start out here um, with a bore scope. I guess we'll get her opened up and uh, get a look at what it what it looks like before we start. All right, so we're really just going to be talking about cleaning the barrel, okay? Anything in relation to like your scope or your trigger, suppressor, all of those things, you know, there's other videos you can watch about cleaning those things. I'm really just going to talk to you guys about cleaning the barrel. All right, now at this point, we're going to talk about like there's two fundamentally different things you can think about doing when you're cleaning the barrel. You know, the obvious one is you're cleaning the barrel. You're removing the carbon and you're removing the copper. And, you know, there's different chemicals made to dissolve those different things that you could use effectively. They work, dissolve those uh, uh, fouling components, get them out of the barrel. You can see with a bore scope how clean the barrel is after. Now, that's an example of only cleaning a barrel. But what I want to talk to you about are the effects of a rough barrel, okay? What happens when you shoot a barrel, especially high-performance rifle barrel, it's not just getting dirty, but over time you develop fire cracking. And that fire cracking combined with the fouling acts to make the barrel rougher, okay? And sometimes even constrained too, depending on what kind of powder you're burning. And as the barrel gets rougher and possibly more constrained, what you'll see that as, as a shooter, you'll see that as an increase in pressure and velocity as you shoot the same ammo and the, and the barrel continues to foul, all right? So your velocity will go up and up and up as the barrel fouls, this is especially evident when a barrel is, you're going from new, okay, and it's getting broken in. Because then you're starting with, if it's a custom barrel, a very smooth barrel that develops this roughness over the first couple hundred rounds and increases speed. Everybody talks about a new barrel speeding up. Well, that's the mechanism for it, is that roughness that gets developed in the barrel. It generates higher back pressure for the bullet when the internal ballistic cycle is pushing it out. And that increased pressure feeds back into, into the burn and you get more energy in that burn. Um, and so that's how the roughness in the barrel affects the internal ballistic cycle that affects your velocity and pressure. All right, so it's not good enough then just to remove the fouling. There's also a roughness issue in the barrel as well, that even if you remove the carbon and copper, there's still roughness that's still going to keep your velocity and pressure elevated. All right, and the way that we deal with that problem is we smooth the barrel, okay? How do we smooth it? There's abrasive compound like JB bore paste that we can use to smooth out. It removes fouling too, all right? The, that abrasive kind of like rubs out the carbon and copper fouling as well as smooths the fire cracking of the barrel. So after you do a cycle of cleaning the way I'm gonna show you, your barrel will be not only clean but also smooth and not building high pressures from the roughness that's in the barrel. Okay, first we're gonna get a look at things with a bore scope to see how things look before we get started. All right, so you guys won't be able to see exactly what I see on the screen here, but I'll take pictures and you'll be able to see where in the barrel these pictures came from. Okay. So here we are coming right into the throat, the very beginning of the riflings. I'm going to take some pictures here. 
right at the ramp. This is still a pretty new barrel and I can see that there's not very much fire cracking yet right here on the riflings. There's a couple pictures of the lands and then we'll look. The fire cracking is actually developing a couple inches down the barrel. Get a couple good focused pictures of it here. You can tell it's, you know, the roughness that I'm talking about is evident as well as the fouling that you'll see in these pictures. It will get further down the barrel here. Further down you get, the less roughness and fouling there tends to be, um, but we're gonna get it all out. So that's kind of what we're starting with. I'll come back here and try to get some pictures of that fire cracking again. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. And the idea again is to not only clean the barrel by removing the fouling, but also smooth it. Smooth out that fire cracking so we get the pressures and velocities back down to what they're intended for for the ammo type in this rifle. All right, so the tools we're gonna need, let's bring that out. Okay, so the fundamental process here that we're gonna go through, I'll just tell you all at once. Um, we're gonna put a little wet patch of oil through the barrel just so it's not dry when we start. And then we're gonna do a couple cycles with JB bore paste. We're gonna do 30 strokes on one patch and then we're gonna put a fresh patch on and do 30 strokes again. Okay, that's basically the essence of it, but I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how I do this. All right, so first of all, we're just gonna use um, standard patch. We're gonna put a little bit, just a little bit of something on there just so the barrel doesn't start out completely dry, okay? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover one of these patches. When I say cover, I really mean it. We're gonna really lather it on there. Okay, now we've got a patch with a lot of this abrasive compound really embedded in there. You want that to fit really tight in your barrel, okay? You want to fit really tight in there and just one patch over this jag doesn't really make it that tight. And if you put two patches on, then it's too tight. So in this particular case, you know, you work it out for your jag and barrel, whatever the fit has to be. But what you're going for is a fit that is, is, pretty, is really tight. Like you're gonna work up a sweat in this process if you do it right. Now, you might not need a patch and a half. Again, depending on how your patches and jags fit in your barrel, you'll find a way that works. But in this barrel with these jags and these patches, it's a patch and a half. And the effort that you're going for, I mean, since you are mechanically removing fouling and abrasion, it takes, it takes force, all right? So this is a good fit in the barrel, this amount of resistance. Now we're gonna go 30 strokes in total, focusing on the chamber end, okay? Every time we're gonna come out of the chamber and back in, that's gonna work the lead real heavy where we want it, where the firing cracking is the heaviest. But then as we get further down the barrel, you don't wanna come out the end and it doesn't need much um, cleaning down there anyway. So we're gonna do 30 strokes in the throat and then replace the patch. Okay, now that we've got 30 strokes through there, we're gonna bring it out the barrel. You cannot bring it out the end of the barrel with that patch on it or you'll never get it back in. Uh, you have to come back out and start over again. So you want to keep it in the barrel for 30 strokes. Take it out. Clean the rod off. And we're going to do the same exact process again. We're just going to repeat that same thing two times. If you, if you went 60 strokes with the same one, it would it'd be too worn out. So that's why we put more goop on here and go again at it with a, a second run.
you know, when you're dealing with solvents and you've got that kind of a mess, every cleaning technique has its a different kind of mess. This technique is kind of free of the fluid mess, but you've got this, this greasy abrasive here to deal with. Okay, here we go on our patch and a half again. So that's just what it should look like right there whenever you're going at it, okay? Now we're just going to repeat this 30 strokes. It's, it's hard again at first because you've got a new fresh patch on there. But then after a while it gets kind of worn in. Okay, there's our 30 strokes, and we're gonna try to work, work towards the muzzle end a little bit here with it, just so that we get some passes up there. But uh, in reality, it's gonna come out the end, and uh, it doesn't matter if you work the muzzle end as much as the breech end. The breech end is what has the roughness from the fire cracking, so that is really where the majority of the cleaning's taking place. All right, so once you have your two cycles of abrasive cleaning, then you're down to just, you're done, basically. You're just now trying to get um, the stuff out of the barrel. Okay, so clean patches, oily patches, you're just getting the abrasive out. So everything from here on out is just making the gun ready to shoot again by getting rid of what's in there. So you can go back to oil and do some passes back and forth, however you want to. This isn't the important part. You know, you're never gonna get them coming out 100% clean, but uh, you're going for most of the way there. And so the barrel is pretty cleaned out now, and we just have, I have this uh, bore mop kind of thing that, that I use to clean the chamber out. Maybe I should call it a chamber mop. And uh, that'll go up in here and get any of the abrasive out of the chamber. All right, now, other than, you know, just taking a towel and going up around there, making sure the abrasive is out of all the places that you don't want it. Okay, now we're gonna take the bore scope, take another look in there, and we'll see what we see. All right, now, I'm gonna take the same picture of the beginning of the riflings. There's another picture of the lands, and we're a little bit down into where the worst of the fire cracking was now. And I'm gonna take some pictures there. Of course, you can still see the fire cracking, but it doesn't appear to have any more raised edges. You know, it just kind of looks like, you know, it's fractured, but, but flat and smooth. Okay, we'll go further down the barrel. That's what we look like down there. And further still. You can see how there is, uh, all of the fouling is gone and also it left the barrel smoother as well. So I, I want to talk more about that smoothness because it makes more of a difference than just, you know, I'm happy that my barrel's smooth. You know, it has real important consequences. So one of those consequences that you'll see when you shoot your barrel dirty and you're using high performance ammo, the pressure and velocity are going to continue to rise until you start blowing primers, your groups get big, your brass is too stretched out to load again. All these problems you'll have from a dirty, rough barrel until you clean it properly all right now once you clean it properly and you go back to shooting it will take a, quite a few rounds for the velocity to, to become problematic again because you've smoothed it out so if you're if it's a new barrel and it's mostly smooth you can probably go two or three hundred rounds before it really needs cleaned 
in, when I say need, in terms of like you've elevated your pressure and velocity up to where it's problematic. Um, on an old barrel, you know, say round 700 through 1,000, you might need to clean every 100 rounds because the barrel is already deeply fire cracked and you're doing what you can to keep it going by. But in the first 300 rounds, you know, the barrel started smooth, so it may take those 300 rounds to make it rough. What I'm saying is early in a barrel's life, the cleaning window is longer than it is late in the barrel life. Now, you, you might choose to still clean at short intervals when it's new so that the barrel lasts longer. Same as an engine, you know, a brand new car, you can probably go 20,000 miles before you have problems from an oil change, probably way more, but you shouldn't. You know, you know your engine will be better if you clean, if you change the oil, maintain it on a regular cycle, um, and that's what you can choose to do with your rifle. So there's a, there's a couple important practical consequences of this mindset of thinking when it comes to cleaning. The mindset being that you're addressing roughness as well as fouling. Okay, and one of the important things is that thinking about barrels and cleaning them this way will enable you to keep your system in a more consistent range of operation. And what I mean by that is if you don't address the roughness in your barrel, you continue to build, your velocity will continue to migrate up as a result of that roughness, creating more friction in the barrel, creating more pressure and more velocity. So you're increasing, you're migrating up and up out of your window where you want your velocity to be if you don't clean properly, all right? Another problem that can happen if you don't clean properly is that sometimes you can generate through that friction enough heat that it will actually cause the bullets to fail. All right, we've heard of bullets blowing up in high capacity, high performance cartridges. Um, 300 Norma is one of them. Some people blow up 215 grain hybrid bullets in 300 Normas. And the reason for that is because the barrels are not properly maintained. All right, now this goes for other things too. Six mils, bullets, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things blow up. But the common denominator is more so the roughness of the barrel than anything else. All right, so that's how I clean rifle barrels, and um, that's why I do it that way. And hopefully, if you decide to give this method a try, it works as well for you as it has for me.